Hello, it's Paul here, and I'm going to mess with Font Forge of all things. So where is it? Font Forge. This is like a cool program for creating your own fonts if you're in Linux. I think there might be other ports of it, but I do know that Linux works well, so here it is. This is Font Forge. I am coming up with my own little font, and it's pretty simple to use if you use uh, Illustrator Inkscape. It kind of works in a similar fashion, and so yeah, I believe you get this window at first, and there's nothing else. This one doesn't show up, but you double click on one of these little boxes to uh, make a font, and then you get the little thing here. You can get this window here. I'm still not sure about like kerning spaces, and I believe it just comes with a general layout. And I think you only get the top height and the bottom height in the base of your descenders. So I had to add like another one for the middle parts, like the B's, E's, whatever letters have the middle bar. So I just added my own guide there. <laughs> and there's other videos that show this stuff, but I'm going to try to make a uh, number four. So I'll go with that right now, and let's do the number four. So I'll double click on this, and over here it starts a new tab. I'm using the newest version, sometimes the versions that uh, come with the add. Well, if I go here and go to uh, this here, the software manager, that will list the old version. So to get the new version, you have to do the PPA thing, which I showed earlier. Or you can do it in a terminal like most people do, but I also showed you how to do it with the GUIs. It works. So, let's see, this is number four. This is the base height. This is where the center bar would be. This is the top height. And I believe the kerning is set up on this automatically, so... You might have to troubleshoot that later, but let's do that. So, I pick the little block here. This is like sharp corners. Just click around, man. It's pretty simple. I'm going to add that one just to round it like that. And back here. And just click on things to highlight them. Make first. And also, the little one that's the first will actually show the general rotation, I believe it is clockwise for the outside and counterclockwise for the inside. So if you're making like a letter and it doesn't show up, there's ways to correct it and it's automatically too. I could have probably made this bar overlapping or something, but it's rough. It's supposed to be kind of a weird little font if you don't know what's the name is Simpleton. <laughs> I don't know if there's a font by that name already or it just might be or something. I call it simple to from you know, I might have to rename it. Might have to rename it, you never know. Still. I would like the release of my own font, that would be kind of cool, I might do that. So you see my number four. Here up the curviness. To this side of it, ever so slightly. So there's little nuances there too. And I believe this can import stuff, but I just like building it here because it's quick, it's simple, and like I got a number four. Number four is a little bit small, so what I'll do is I got the pointer on, I'll just drag a box around everything. The scaling tool, and this is kind of weird, it scales from where you place the cruiser when you go to drag it. It just doesn't put a box around it like you get in other programs. I mean, you are used to having the box with the handles, but it doesn't do it in this. So you kind of have to anticipate where you want to scale your thing from, and then you move your cursor there, and then you scale it. So, so it's already scaled big. Yeah, that's more like the same size as the other numbers now, right? Close to it. Yeah, see. So 
as for it's pretty simple. I just use these points here. You can use the pen tool, but I don't know if there's hotkeys for the pen. I'm used to doing pen and illustrator where you use the alt key or shift key and stuff like that. It doesn't seem to work that way here, so I'm like, what's the point of having it if you can't do that? Might be a trick to it, but I don't know it. Otherwise, I would use the pen. So, like I said, I like to use the keys in illustrator when I use the pen, and it can get my cusps and stuff really fast. So, that's one thing. But you can import your outlines and stuff from Illustrator or from uh, Inkscape. But I figured I'd just work quickly in here. Yeah, I'm being kind of lazy about it. So that's number four. And now that I finished it, I am going to save it. So file and save. And I don't even think it even matters which one you use. It's still like they all do the same thing. Why well, redundancy? But hey, this one has a few other items here. Uh, what is that? I don't know. <laughs> so, but the file save is the same. It doesn't matter which one it is. As far as I know. And I think I'll do the asterisk next. The asterisk. And I'm going to do something stylized. I'm going to do the five sided asterisk. Star or whatever you want to call it. them around. So you can see it works just like driving points on the street. Same thing. Bez your handles me. Now how to use Bez your handles you should be good. You guys like these indicators and guides, I'm not sure what they all are, but they come on automatically. And you can also drag edges to just, just like a like I said it's so much like all screen, it's funny. You know how to use that. Should be good to go with this. Pretty close to it. I guess Inkscape is somewhere. You can grab the thing and see the handle. But you can grab these little handles. I think there's hot keys that lock these and stuff too in certain keys. But I'm not super familiar yet, so. My problem is that, like when I'm using this cement here on. I'm using it on two different computers, but when I'm on this computer, uh, it does not connect to the internet, so I can't really use the help. <laughs> There's no like help documents as far as I know, so I just have to uh, estimate it or do my research when I'm offline. On it. It's a pain though, because it's like, I hate it when it does that too. It does that sometimes. I'll just like select random shit without me doing anything. That is a bit annoying. I don't know if it's something you can turn on or off. Or... See, it's doing it again. That I deselected it. Just lets you like select more than one thing without shift selecting for some stupid reason. Which I find annoying at times. But I do plan on doing this whole uh, ISO 8859 or anything that has the character over it. I plan on filling out the whole thing before I release it. So some of these other characters I would presume are just your regular glyphs, but with the little doodads over them. And where I'm at, I speak English, so I don't really use the accents much. So <laughs> other than name foreigner words, but so that's that. That's the asterisk and it looks acceptable. Should we make it larger or is it fine this size? It's fine this size. Yeah. See it's grabbing stuff. Yeah, I don't want to grab. Why oh, does it? Is it really it? Like I said, it's really freaking annoying. It's a click on the one I expected to deselect the other unless I hold down shift. And it's not doing anything. Alright. That's that. So I showed you number four. I did an asterisk. What else can I do? I'll do a question mark. So, I'll click E for question mark. And 
One of these, I believe, is a shapes tool. Air circle. So I want a circle for the bottom of my question mark. But that'll be good enough. Here's my question mark. So see, that's how you do stuff. And is it Font Forge, right? Yeah. So let me know if you're interested in this font, and I'll see if I can figure out a way to release it. I might see my font at that font or something. It'll be PGS Simpleton or PGS whatever I rename it if somebody else is using it. Name. It's just highly possible in the world of fonts. There's so many ridiculous font names because all the Quick and easy ones tend to get taken up first. But any fine, I'll release it. I'll try to get my initials on it somehow. Somehow or other. Alright. And I still have the lowercase sets to go through and all these funny characters. But you see how it works. Like I said, uh, the outside parts of the glyphs go clockwise, the inside parts go counterclockwise with the holes. It's also possible to draw parts that overlap, and then you just go element, and then you clear the overlap and stuff, and you do it that way. So like for the Q, I actually copied my letter O, and then just threw the little bar going through it. Stuff like that, and it makes it into a Q. It's pretty easy. So that's it, make sure this is saved, and that'll be 